Okay. I have mixed feelings about this episode. Mainly only in the first half of it. Uh, I know what it is, but then again, I'm asking myself, can I truly be mad about it? And let me explain. First, let's talk about the thing between Toma and Mikasa. Here, I thought, finally, we're going to have our um, Tomaka. This, 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 this is my ship name for Toma and Mikasa. Tomaka moment. Like, finally, a Tomaka moment. We thought M Mikasa was finally going to say something to, you know, for him to agree, to, for her to help. Like, finally. I was looking forward to that, too, but I saw the previews. Like, oh, finally, something dope. It doesn't happen. Instead of Toma pulls off a Shiru Emiya from Fate Stay Night. If you know what Fate Stay Night is, you understand what I'm saying. Yes, Mikasa found out that Toma had lost his memory, but even with that, he believes that the true Toma was never in his brain, but within his heart. So no matter what kind of person he might have been, he believed that Toma in the past would still do what he does and have to do everything on his own. In a way, he doesn't want Mikasa to get involved within the magical world. He would rather have her to stay on a scientific side. Because he knows she's not weak, you know. She has faced very powerful opponents, especially in her own show. And by the way, season 3, by the way. Whoop, whoop. But he believes he doesn't want her to get too caught up in the corruption of the magical world. Because it will get her involved in some sort of way. The question is, is what makes him do this? Because even after the events that happened with Aqua, he wakes up in the hospital not knowing what he did. Could it be that it's just his own share of will or something else that's working behind the scenes? It really did raise some triggers for me, like, what makes Toma be Toma? Yes, a lot of main characters do this where they believe they have to do everything on their own, but Tomo wasn't doing it on his own, he just knew that Mikasa shouldn't have been there, and that's point blank in it. So the more I thought about it, the more like, you have a point. So I was just angry because I didn't get my Tomoka moment, which I have been praying for, so probably somewhere down the line, this is the last season, unless they decided to do the grand finale at the movie, who knows, but... Who knows, we'll probably get a Tomoka moment someday down the line. A really good one. I'm just, that's all I want. That's, that's, please let me have it. <laughs> On the other hand, um, talking about the church versus Aqua of the rear, the, the climax was, it felt cheesy. It felt really cheesy. The priest of the Far East, despite everything how strong she was, she was no match for a man who had so much power and talent. But he was just a man born of talent, so he probably never knew what defeat was. So throughout his life, Aqua, aka William, probably knew everything he did was he did with high expectations from other people. Makes sense. You can't blame someone who's born of talent. I mean, they were destined for greatness. Like, I guess you can be upset with yourself for not having it, but at the end of the day, that's just how things are. You just have to work your way through it. So, however, this grand finale was like, it made sense, but yet it was just kind of cliche and cheesy and then again this is index we're talking about there are some very cheesy cliche moments and i mean a lot of them in this show and being one of them is the big grand speech to take down the bad guy like every time before they take down a bad guy they always have to do this grand speech about something like how dare you insult my friends or i'm not alone you know fairy tale stuff <laughs> um but it was still nice though, because even with um, her and her group still facing off Aqua, it still wasn't enough. It had to take a nice distraction, and luckily for us, that's what Toma had to do. He had to distract Aqua just for a few seconds for Isua to get in the final blow. And that's what happened. So, like I said, it makes sense, but it feels so cliche. <laughs> But besides that, though, um, I did like it, though. I did like how Isua gave the final blow. And she was the one that said, I am the one that's going to take him down. In the beginning of this episode, she did feel kind of, you know, inferior. Because she was looking at it and she's like, yo, she's seen these two saints fight. She's like, we're just playing a game with him when we're fighting him. He could have beaten us any time he wanted to. But I guess he chose not to. But she was more focused on fighting Toma. 
Now about the way, we have one seat left. And guess who it is? It's Femia of the right, baby. He finally shows himself in his grand power. Well, not to his final grand, but he is different from the other seats. He is, he is not interested in what's going on in Academy City, but instead he is looking towards England and he wants the library. And we all know what that means. But what is it in England he truly desires to awaken the true power of Michael's right hand, the hand of miracles? So, some of you might be thinking who are anime only watchers, and I am myself an anime only watcher. His power seems kind of similar to Toma in a way, doesn't it? You know, right hand, miracles, bad luck, the two colliding together to see what happens. It's pretty interesting but I'm not gonna spoil that much for you I only read some few things here and there some chapters that I did sneak a peek at now not a full glance but just sneak a little peek at to find out about this character I am hyped for his next arc and everything Tomas for himself doesn't seem like he's gonna have any rest this dude's gonna be on full alert battle mode in order to stop down to this corrupted church and their plan of having the power of God bestowing upon them so like I said, mixed feelings about this episode. I was hoping it would be better in a way, you know. Um, it just felt, it does feel a little rushed. I would have to say that. That, that um, after hearing that they're pretty much adapting like, what, 11 volumes into one season? It does feel as rush. I will admit that. And I was, I'm so pleased, don't be wrong. I am pleased with what we're getting with Index. You know, I, I thought we would never get a... No, I take it back. I knew we would get a season three. I would say it, but for it to come, I'm grateful. But I was hoping for it to have four seasons of Index to cut the work in half so we'll have better pasting. Because in a way, you know, we're just getting arc after arc. It's like after every three episodes, we're jumping into a new arc just like that. So, and it's that... The viewers aren't having enough time to really gather all the information what's going on before them because things are just happening so fast and i did read in some comments that people are having a hard time watching this season of index much as if they're enjoying it it feels like everything's happening to them so fast we're only on the ninth episode for god's sakes we're not even halfway through this so yeah I'm, i'll see what else they're gonna do with this Oh uh, yeah. Anyway, that's all I got for Index. Um, it was enjoyable, but yet again, a part of it just I felt a little disappointment. So not one of the best episodes, or very strong conclusions. But however, it did open segue into a more interesting arc. I would say something that has more dire situations to happen and go on. So that's what I got for this video. Um, yeah, Index was okay this week. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, just let me know what you did enjoy about it or what you don't like about it so far when it comes to adaption of the light novels. So anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please rate, comment, subscribe, and of course hit that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload. This has been Macro Anime, and I'm signing out. Have a good one, guys.